I'm here with Daniel Gomez. Welcome to the Oil & Gas Pitch Podcast. Today's interview is a little bit different because usually I have tons of notes, you know, and I'm all prepared and I've got kind of my ideas of what I'm trying to learn in the day. Mm -hmm. But you are with Dell Technologies. You are someone who uh, shared with me a lot about what you guys are doing in the oil and gas space. It's really something that I think a lot of people who just think Dell computers, they think hardware, you know, they're, they're imagining their, their uh, visit to Best Buy and what that means. This is yeah. so above and beyond that I think a lot of people will find it really new information to them. To kick it off, just tell me a little bit about your role, Daniel, what you do, and then really what Dell Technologies is doing in the oil and gas industry that is gonna really make an impact. All right. Oh, thanks for having me, first of all, Warren. I appreciate your time. Well, I'm with Dell for 11 years now. I'm a business development manager and alliance manager with the Unstructured Data Division. Uh, we've been doing oil and gas practice in, in Dell Technologies for more than 10 years now. And uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of people think about Dell as you know a company that sells laptop, but we do much more than that. We have like an end-to-end -end portfolio of solutions that can cover since laptops and monitors and, and desktops and uh, high-performance workstations up to high-performance clusters and high-performance storage. Now, one of the things that I love all of that, it's it's been interesting to me to kind of dive into kind of the archaic life of these oil and gas producers and the way these companies are run. Something that you, like within the first 20 seconds of us talking, you pointed out how data is stored and like upload times and quite a few things that I believe uh, not only will it be interesting to talk about it from a results standpoint, like just in us having a conversation, but I know you also lined up more of a technical side for some of the uh, listeners that might be more on uh, a technical knowledge base and they're doing this uh, at a ground floor level. Uh, can you tell us about Cayenne, a little bit about our second guest that will be joining us today? Of course. So Cayenne Benedicto is a partner of ours in Brazil. He is one of the engineers in the high performance computing lab for Sepetro. I'll let him introduce himself and give details about his role. Sure. But he is uh, like uh, with us. We are putting together a center of excellence in high performance computing in Brazil, and he is one of the most important partners that we have there. I love that. And so that's another first about today, which is we will be bringing in Cayenne later on in the interview, uh, virtually to share some of the specs and a lot of detail that uh, I think will be, for me, eye-opening. And then secondly, uh, for the listener, especially the, the potential prospects that need this solution, an opportunity for them to have internal dialogue on the performance of what you guys do and why Dell Technologies. Let's talk about your day in, day out life working in this industry and, and what this solution, where it comes up with clients. So uh, we do uh, data management, right? Uh, and most of the oil and gas companies today, they deal with this enormous amount of data on a daily basis, especially the upstream side with pre-stack data and post-stack data, seismic data. And you know they've been doing this for years now. It's not new for them. But as you know, it may be like a cliche word, but silos, it's, it's real and it's happening in the industry for a long time now. So what we do is we try to automate that data management uh, with our uh, data management framework. We have products that will uh, cover since, you know, fast scratch, HPC storage, all the way to cloud archive uh, solutions. And our main objective is to automate everything that can be automated so we can bring more efficiency to the day-to-day -day activities. Imagine that you have like, you know, uh, petabytes of information, but not all of those petabytes are being used at the same time. So you got to position that in the right tier of storage and pay the right price for that. And also archive what you don't need to use now and, you know, recover that data later when you definitely will need that for some reason, for some business reason. So that's what we do, basically. Yeah, because you hear okay, an interesting kind of thing that I'm hearing you talk about is you often hear people say you're only as good as your data, but the fact is, is you can have data that you need stored that you don't even know how to use it yet. You have to be able to access it and it's how you access it and it's the information in that that might not be something you dive into t today, 
but you don't see companies wanting to purge this great information. Exactly. So if you think about geoseismic exploration, for example, you, you have a field and 25 years ago, you had a technology that was uh, providing you ability to find out if you have hydrocarbons there or not, right? Mm -hmm. But now with new technologies like deep learning analysis, for example, you can bring that data back and run new algorithms against the same data and, uh. you know, compare, uh, you know, this new technology and, 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 and run those uh, tests again against your old data. And maybe, you know, you can find new reservoirs that you didn't find before, they couldn't find before because you didn't have the technology. So that's why data is always important. You don't want to purge data. You want to keep data. Mm -hmm. However, you know, data has a, a, a life cycle. Mm -hmm. You start your data, you collect your data now, you do your analysis, you want to extract everything that you can, your insights from that data, and then move that data to a location where it's safe, it's uh, protected, you know, you have it there, but you, you're not using it. So you don't have to pay like, you know, for high performance storage solutions or, you know, low latency storage to access that data right now. You need that space for new projects, new data that you're bringing. And then eventually in the future, if you want to bring that back and analyze it again, then you can do it. But you can do it in an automated way, not manually, like most of the oil and gas companies they do today because they have so many silos mm. and so many solutions. So literally, uh, the old way is that you actually have humans very much involved in what's being uploaded and downloaded and where it's stored. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, even with the cloud solutions today, what, uh, you know, in my conversation with companies in the oil and gas sector, especially upstream, what I learned is that, you know, yes, we do have a cloud model. It's really interesting. However, we are making the same mistakes we, <laughs> we made in the past, right? We are moving silos from on-premise locations to the cloud. So what these customers are telling me now is that, yes, I have here two storage solutions in my cloud, my public cloud provider, and I still have to move data manually from one wow. to another uh, because, you know, I don't have an automated solution to do that. Incredible. And so, I mean, this is fascinating to me also just because over the last couple years, right, we've had different technologies come on the show. I've also been able to see some really amazing panels about what the oil and gas industry is doing. And you have this thing, the Internet of Things, where people are, you know, these companies that are service providers are saying, hey, we have the ability to pull data from all of your equipment. We'll know what your runtime is on your motors. And where I sit, you know, here it is, uh, you know, I'm very much um, listening and, and using my business acumen. I'm thinking, there is a whole lot of data involved in storing that. And then there's not only that, but you have probably different relationships that uh, you have within a company where you're saying this data is for that company. This other data will help us in this other section of what we do. And if somebody has to pull that all together and it's not to where it's like an automated stream, it does seem like you're not taking advantage of the opportunities. Yeah. So if you think about data, data is generated in, in many formats. You, you have structured data, you have unstructured data, you have streaming data. So mm. it, you know, ultimately the application will drive the IT infrastructure that you need to run that data on. Uh, but yes, you're right. Not all data is like a good fit for you know, every, every type of test or whatever you want to do. You have the right data for the right mm. application and the right use case. So for example, IoT. Uh, you know, usually IoT is a continuous streaming of data. So you want to know if a pump, you know, what what is the pump temperature sure. all the time. So you can predict like a, a raise of temperature mm -hmm. to maybe take an action before something happens. Sure. So you can send maintenance to, to, to take a look into what's going on. Mm -hmm. You want to learn patterns like, for example, you can have like uh, for a week, the temperature is increasing. And then after a week of increasing temperatures, you have a problem. And that becomes a pattern. So you want to learn those patterns so you can run predictive uh, maintenance to optimize. So optimize what you have today is one of the paths 
you know, to improve efficiency, one of the paths to the net zero that all these oil and gas companies, oil and gas companies are, uh, you know, chasing for 2030 and 2050. Not everything is the same. You really have to dive into the performance of what the technology is attached to the storage that allows you to have more capabilities. Yeah, we have multiple products that uh, support the uh, the upstream high performance computing industry, mm -hmm. right? And none of them are, they have the same architecture. So because of that, sometimes the companies, they have to create these baselines for, uh, you know, to compare products mm -hmm. and, and, and create these RFPs and, and, and describe minimal requirements. So that will eventually drive companies to, to procure products that are not the best fit for what they're uh, looking for, mm. right? And that is one of the main reasons why today, you know, you still see a lot of silos. Because essentially what they are doing is they have a problem, they buy a solution. Mm. They have another problem, they buy another <laughs> solution. And there's not, uh, and there's no it's not seamless. It's like it's, literally you yeah. have several you have several irons so, in the fire. Exactly. So it's a lot of a lot of different projects and problems, a lot of different solutions. And and these uh, engineers in the HPC space, they're really smart. So they they can make it work. Yeah. What what they they, they have to realize is that there's a better way, an easier way to make that work. Well, I know when we get on with Kyan, he's gonna be talking a little bit more like technically deep. But I want to just, before we go there for our audience, like to dive into the, almost like a case study or true stories that we can share that will help everyone kind of wrap their minds around this before we get on with Cayenne. Is there, uh, I know you have a deck, I don't know if there's something in there, but I would love to talk about kind of the results of what your clients are seeing being partnered with you. Yeah, so uh, we see a, a, a really good cost reduction in terms of, uh, you know, the, the process of manage the data. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to spend your cycles moving data around anymore or rebalance your storage because you're not uh, uh, extracting all the performance that you can really extract. So what our product does is automate all of that. So when you, for example, and there are other challenges like when it comes to a uh, hardware uh, refresh cycle, like as we are dealing with this large amount of data, mm -hmm. it's always hard to migrate uh, petabytes of data, right? So our technology, uh, it it has a uh, a feature that will allow us to uh, kind of mix old hardware with new hardware and do that migration seamless without disruption. Mm. It will so we can move petabytes of data in the backend through the backend network to the new hardware without having to stop the whole environment or having to, you know, uh, stop applications from running and things like that. We can do that in background and, and, and continue to support the, the production uh, as it is today. So that's, that's one thing that we, we do. We have multiple uh, companies. Uh, we are basically in 92% of the top 25 oil and gas companies today. They use our products. They use their workstations, they use our storage, our servers. And uh, when, they, when they move to this technology, you know, they, they, it becomes a, a standard for them. Mm. So they, they, they can really see the, uh, how, how easy they can manage the data and how easy uh, their lives became after, after the move. So yeah, it sounds like they optimize, right? Like everyone has like these different ways they do things, but are you optimized? Are you able to really get the maximum output for the technologies you're exactly. investing in? Yeah, so we are very flexible. We, we can grow from few terabytes to petabytes and you manage this, the data the same way. So that reduce complexity management, uh, bottom line less total cost of ownership. Mm. So we can uh, help during uh, hardware refresh cycles. We also have uh, automatic load balance in the back end. So everything is spread across all infrastructure. So you don't have hot spots anymore. And we have a multi-protocol access. So that means that you can write data through one application and read data from another application different protocols, modern protocols like S3, 
object storage protocols and file objects like NFS or uh, SMB or SIFs. So we support all of that. And it, we are software defined. So we, we created that uh, architecture 20 years ago. And it's a future proof architecture because we've been adding new protocols along the years, like we did for SMB. We started with NFS, then we did for SMB. We added Hadoop file system. Then we added now, you know, the most recent uh, addition was S3, the S3 protocol. So we are future proof uh, technology. And, and that's how we can help these customers too. Future proof, I yeah. love that because that's what people suffer from all the time is they're going, is this solution going to be still warranted like five years from now, 10 years from now? Can they continue to use it? Yes, and, yes. And future proof no you're saying it. is that this, is, this will plug and play as long as, as long as you have it. Exactly, no, no doubt about it. We, we never uh, created this product attached it to a specific hardware or appliance. Uh, we've been moving that uh, since we started back in 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. You know, now the, the latest release of our product, we call it PowerScale. It runs on PowerEdge server. So we moved from our old hardware after the, the merger with uh, EMC and mm -hmm. Dell. We are now using Dell hardware. So we're using PowerEdge and we'll continue to do that. It's a software defined solution. That's incredible. So mm -hmm. something I love about Dell is it's Texas based. I'm a native Texan, you know, we, the oil and gas industry in Texas have such a history and there's so much here, like right here in our state. But Cayenne is in Brazil. And I know that there's an international component to where you're solving problems. Um, should we speak to that before we bring Kyan on? And, uh, and I'm excited to like get his point of view and kind of share more on a technical side uh, with the listener what this is. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, as you, as you may know, uh, national oil companies, they, they have more or less 80% of the proven, proven uh, reserves in oil in the world. So we, we help a lot of national companies with our technology. And in Brazil specifically, they have the pre-salt and they have, uh, you know, a big national oil company there. And Kaya is, uh, is one of the engineers that help mm. us. So I'll, I'll, I'll let you bring Kaya and Kaya yeah. can, can explain more about what he does and, and the test that we put together with our technology. So I told you there's some firsts today. And uh, now this is where I'm going to really try. I'm, I am not Harry Potter, but we're going to try to do some magic and have Kaya here with us. So here we go. Ah! <laughs> so, Cayenne, thank you for joining us. You're in Brazil. Yeah. So you're in Brazil. You are, I mean, this is, Dell is really international on this, in, uh, on this endeavor. Can you talk to us? I, I know you've kind of listened in to what Daniel and I have exchanged so far. What are some of the highlights of what you've heard and then some of the things that you think maybe from a technical side are really important to bring up? I like the way Dell sees silos and how it's trying to deconstruct them. Um, this is very important for computing as well because um, computing happens everywhere in the upstream, right? So even in the, ch in the ships doing the acquisitions, you have computing happening online and those results must be uploaded somewhere and then need to be downloaded and processed. So to be able to do this integration, it's really important for the oil and gas industry because in the end, there's a lot of um, human components. There's a lot of logistics involved and the more we push uh, towards this global approach where everyone um, in the world, if you have a multinational company, is working on data, perhaps on the same data, it's important to have those, the, this data readily available, right? Straight off the ship like that. That's powerful. Yeah. Not only is that an incredible component, but it leads me to ask you, what is changing in high performance computing? Like what beyond this ability for, you know, a, a ship out in the middle of nowhere to be able to upload and do what you're talking about? How do you see just the trend across across the entire industry? Well, the trend is already here for a couple of years now, which is the inclusion of GPUs. Um, on the computing side of things. Uh, nowadays, you have GPUs doing 
practically all the, the horsepower. Um, now, GPUs, are, which stand for graphics processing units, um, were invented uh, to do, well, graphics, to do renderings like you see in Pixar movies or video games. But um, starting from 2008, uh, we've seen those types of hardware being used to do scientific computing, right? Because we discovered that um, the, the same hardware that simulates um, a piece of reality in movies and video games can also help us to do the same kinds of simulations, the same kind of computing to do um, to solve real world problems like oil and gas, like biology, chemistry, and other problems. And they are much more efficient than the CPUs that you find um, on most machines because they are built for a different purpose. And this purpose aligns perfectly with the problems that we are solving today um, in the scientific community and industry. Um, so you see those being used for not only HPC, but as Daniel mentioned, AI, um, pattern recognition, and Internet of Things, all of that is connected uh, with the GPUs as the backbone. I love it. And so, um, and thank you for that, because it, for me especially, it really clarifies, allows me to visualize the difference between this GPU, CPU, why it's better, and uh, and it almost sounds like it's 4D out of, you know, like anyone using CPUs is kind of stuck in the 80s in a way. But let me ask you this, in this role where you've been working with clients, uh, you and Daniel have been in calls and consultations, what are some things that you see a lot of people don't realize that they're struggling with, uh, uh, that when you guys come in, they're, you're really like removing the obstacles and you're, you're taking out the stops? Absolutely. Um, one thing that I see is that people manage data um, in very different ways. For instance, we, we maintained around um, 20 ish different tools for our clients that are integrated with their commercial applications for seismic computing. And those applications need to talk to each other and they need to run on HPC clusters. And this is done through data movement, right? Uh, when machines need to talk, they talk through data. And you see sometimes that people treat computing uh, in a way that when they buy a new computer, they build everything from scratch. So you have a new storage, you have new computing nodes, you have a new network infrastructure. And then when you analyze the workflow uh, when dealing with multiple hardware, you see that people are struggling a lot uh, moving data back and forth because you have your applications uh, restricted to a certain group of machines and then you need to move to another because other piece of software is on another group of machines. So you have to copy data back and forth. And this has a impact on time because you're moving terabytes of data, maybe gigabytes of data at once, but in some you have terabytes of data. So people get struggle uh, in this, in this data movement and this mm. affects productivity right because you have to wait now um an integrated solution is hard to build because you have the, you have very different uh you have very different hardware right so what that's one of the the nice things that we that we see on uh, dell's approach to the situation and one of the reasons that we decided to, to do this research with them, right? Because we've seen that many processes in, in the beginning of the seismic processing 
rely on data movement. They are not as computing intensive. So the computing happens very fast. So your limiting factor is data movement. So if we minimize data movement, uh, we minimize the, the time uh, we take to process the, this initial phase right, of data. Which yeah. this just makes me think our little snap of the fingers like introduction is actually applies to what we're talking about. It's about do you want to have a lot of time and distance between you and what your process is? Or do you want it almost instantaneously because it's automated and it's not really depending on a human or an exercise to get it done? Exactly. Exactly. You don't want uh, to have different infrastructures that you have to maintain in order to control your workflow. And that happens uh, pretty much because most of the solutions in the market, they're static, right? Mm -hmm. They have some sort of automation, but they're not completely automated. Mm. So when you build a new infrastructure to solve a specific problem, uh, you have to, to do it from scratch, like he said. And if you start a change, you know, you get different performance and you, you get different latency. And when you have that completely automated, you know, you have to think about your business, not about what is underneath or what is underlying mm -hmm. your IT infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So think about a geoscientist or somebody that is doing a, a, a research. You know, for them, the most important part of the business is to get, you know, as fast as possible to where the, the reservoirs are, where the oil is, and extract that from the subsurface of the earth, right? They don't care about where the data is sitting as long as it's fast and it's accessible. Mm. So if you promote this automation to them, their time to result will be faster and their life will be easier. So before we get into onboarding, I want to talk about cybersecurity. This is a big topic. It's one of the, you see this, um, 10x, you know, the exposure for cybersecurity uh, exposures. Um, is there anything about this product, this solution that caters to that, that brings more comfort to the client? Yes, we do have a ransomware defender solution. We can create the air gap solution. We can duplicate data from one site to another site, multiple sites. Uh, using our product, our native replication. So we can use AI to identify patterns in in uh, in the way that users are using this storage. Mm -hmm. So if we identify that one user has a specific pattern of access and then that changes from one day to another day, we can automatically, you know, shut off the connection and, and cut the the access to the storage so the, there won't be, you know, uh, much damage nice. uh, to the data. And then if someone's like trying to hold you ransom or whatever, you actually have a duplicate file that really... Yeah, you can nothing. always revert snapshots and and you know, uh, recover your data. That's great, I love that. And uh, so here's, a, here's kind of a final question for you guys, um, really sharing this kind of point of view. I wanna talk directly to potential clients and people that might be interested to meet uh, both of you. So when you open a relationship with Dell Technologies and you, you, you hear what you've heard so far and you go, this is something I wanna do, is there downtime associated with it? Is there uh, any consequence to the company that chooses to do business with you uh, while they're onboarding and kind of getting this up and running? It's always hard when you're migrating data from one platform to another platform, it's always hard. It's always involved complex processes and it's not easy. Data migration is not easy. That's why one of the big things about our product is what we call one and done. Once mm. you move your data to our platform, you're done. You don't have to migrate it any, to any other thing because we can handle the, uh, the hardware refresh and all that stuff. So yeah, there's no downtime. It's just the, you know, the matter of migrate that data. Once the data is on, there's no disruption anymore. You can continue to run your w different workflows depending on the application that you want to run. Like I said, we have uh, this data framework can cover uh, a lot of areas in the upstream space, not only the upstream, but in midstream and downstream too. But yeah, companies like, you know, super majors, major company, they're always uh, uh, using uh, workloads that can mm. leverage our product. 
So those are, I would say, in the upstream space, you know, super major, major oil, na national oil and gas companies, companies that run HPC, companies that have applications leveraging GPU direct access, which is the ability to bring data from the storage directly to the GPU without passing through other components like CPU. Those are the candidates to use this new feature that we have in our product. So, uh, you know, they can accelerate time to results. I love it. Well, I'm, I'm about to close the episode out. Kayana, before we uh, sign off, I just want to give you a chance to, like, conclude your thoughts uh, before we uh, make our final announcements from OGGN. Thanks for, thanks for the invitation to be here. Um, I would like to say how important this move is to the community, right? Um, from someone that tries to move um, technology in the sector away from the 80s um, to see effort put into this technology while you see improvements going in all the other parts of the infrastructure is, is, very, is very important. Um, we have, we had a great uh, performance improvement in our tests, in our software, and we believe that this will reflect in a better, um, this will revert to a uh, improvement to the sector overall on how we see data and how we manage um, the life cycle of processing uh, as a whole. Terrific. And Daniel, just final comment. I mean, I know we're uh, about to sign off, but uh, just I know we covered a lot. And uh, I will tell all of you watching uh, and listening that what's really neat is OGGN and Dell Technologies um, have decided there is so much depth to this conversation. This interview just kind of scratches the surface that we will be doing one to two little videos really to dive into some of the aspects that we know are performance related that will really make a difference uh, in your business. So look out for those. And uh, and Daniel, just a last kind of comment before yeah, we go. If you, if you have some uh, important data challenges in your company, reach out to me. I'm in LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. Daniel Estevam Gomez with the S. And uh, we'll have that in the uh, show yeah. notes, everybody. So you reach be able out to, to me, and uh, we'll have the conversation about you know what the product can can do, what the values are, and how I can help, how Dell can help your company to accomplish the challenges that you have. I love it. And a quick thank you to Flowtech for having us here. We're, we're filming this uh, right at the Flowtech uh, headquarters. So big thank you to uh, the team Flowtech and uh, Dell Technologies. This is a, a great kickoff to uh, what we're going to be sharing over the coming year. And thank you both for uh, being here on the Oil & Gas Pitch Podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much Until for having us. Until next time. Thanks, yeah. Daniel. All right, Kayan. Take care. Take care, Kayan. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.